Hello, I'm Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center, that's in Random Lake, Wisconsin, the only random lake in the United States of America. Not so random, in Sheboygan County, um, right across the border from Ozaki County, um, so north of Milwaukee, south of Sheboygan. Glad to have you with us here for our Congregation at Prayer. This week it's abbreviated um, because I'm out of town, and so I'm just recording the daily readings and the catechesis on those readings. And uh, I hope that you uh, will find time to pray the psalm for this week, Psalm 85, to say the memory verse for this week from Romans 12, um, to pray the fifth petition of the Lord's Prayer, and then, of course, to sing the hymn, O God, My Faithful God, which was the hymn of the day for this past Sunday, as well as um, the collect for Sunday and to pray for all those in need. So um, that part I'm not leading you with for the sake of time and preparation, but um, I encourage you to do that as you have opportunity this week. All right. Our first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 32. Behold, a king will reign in righteousness, and princes will rule with justice. A man will be as a hiding place from the wind, and a cover from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, as the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. The eyes of those who, will, who see will not be dim, and the ears of those who hear will, not, will listen. Also the heart of the rash will understand knowledge, and the tongue of the stammerers will be ready to speak plainly. The foolish person will no longer be called generous, nor the miser said to be bountiful. For the foolish person will speak foolishness, and his heart will work iniquity, to practice ungodliness, to utter error against the Lord, to keep the hungry unsatisfied, and he will cause the drink of the thirsty to fail. Also, the schemes of the schemer are evil. He devises wicked plans to destroy the poor with lying words, even when the needy speaks justice. But a generous man devises generous things, and by generosity he shall stand. Rise up, you women. Well, that's far enough, actually. Let's just end on verse 8. So, but a generous man devises generous things, but by generosity he shall stand. Very similar to what we heard on Sunday. Uh, be merciful even as your Father in heaven is merciful. With what measure you measure, uh, it will be measured back to you, right? Jesus said. All right. And then our reading for catechesis is the continuation of the gospel according to St. Matthew. We're in chapter 12, beginning in verse 33. Either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks. A good man out of the good treasure of his heart brings forth good things, and an evil man out of the tre evil treasure brings forth evil things. But I say to you that for every idle word men may speak, they will give an account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you will be condemned. Then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered, saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign, and no sign will be given to it, except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so will the Son of Man be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. The men of Nineveh will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it, because they repented at the preaching of Jonah. And indeed, a greater than Jonah is here. The queen of the south will rise up in judgment with this generation and condemn it, for she came from the ends of the earth to hear the wisdom of Solomon, and indeed, a greater than Solomon is here. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes through dry places seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I will return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first. So, it sh so, shall, it be, oh, so shall it also be with this wicked generation. While he was still talking to the multitudes, behold, his mother and brothers stood outside, seeking to speak with him. 
Then one said to him, Look, your mother and your brothers are standing outside, seeking to speak with you. But he answered and said to the one who told him, Who is my mother, and who are my brothers? And he stretched out his hand toward his disciples and said, Here are my mother and my brothers. For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. There ends the reading. Hmm. Quite a bit to talk about here. All right. Of what should the language of the two trees remind us of? A good tree and a bad tree. Yeah, this is the language of the two trees in the garden from Genesis, is it not? All right. Uh, when did Jesus speak of trees before like this? Don't remember. It's been a couple weeks back as we studied the Sermon on the Mount. Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, and every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. All right, so he's given that context before. How is a tree made good, then? Back in the Sermon on the Mount, either the tree is good or it's bad. Here, you can make the tree good and its fruit good. Yeah, he's talking about the forgiveness of sins, right? The declaration from God that sin is forgiven. And what is the good fruit that flows from the forgiveness of sins? It's faith that practices forgiveness of sins. Forgives as they've been forgiven, right? In verse 34... Whom is he calling this brood of vipers? You just have to go back a few verses and you'll see. Well, there's the heading that kind of gives it away. Now the Pharisees heard it and said, This fellow does not cast out demons except by Beelzebub. Right? So we heard that yesterday. Right? So now he calls them brood of vipers. What is he saying about their teachings then? He's calling them you know, a brood or a, uh, what? Yeah, it's just a nest, uh, offspring of vipers. Offspring of the devil, right? That their teachings are from Satan. They do not seek to gather to Jesus, but rather to scatter, as we heard yesterday. Is the problem of the Pharisees' teaching, is it internal to them or is it external to them? Is it within them or does it come from without them? What does Jesus say here? Verse 5. Yeah, it actually comes from their heart. So it's internal. It comes from the abundance of their hearts. So where do, their, where do all evil actions come? Out of an evil heart. Out of the heart. Okay? So, uh, you know, you can't say the devil made me do it. <laughs> he may have tempted you, um, but it came from you. Right? So who then is a good man? A good man out of the good treasure. Yeah, a good man is, uh, well, one would be Jesus, of course, and then all those who live by faith in Jesus are made good. Again, by the forgiveness of sins, the tree is made good. And what is the good treasure then of his heart? Good treasure of, if you like, Jesus' heart or of your heart who have faith in the righteousness that he bestows upon you in the forgiveness of sins. That's the good treasure. Jesus' priceless treasure. Font of purest pleasure. Right? The one who forgives. Now what are the good things that are brought forth from the good treasure of the forgiven man? So the forgiven man out of the forgiveness of sins brings forth good things. What are those good things? Yeah, works of kindness, loving, merciful service for your neighbor. Forgiving one another. Now, who then is the evil man? The good man being Jesus, the evil man being, yeah, who is opposed to him? Satan. But of course, all those who live also by faith in Satan. You can believe in Satan? Yeah, you can believe in a lie, right? You can believe in his lies. Whether you acknowledge he's the giver of those lies or not isn't the point. And what is the evil treasure, then, of the evil man? 
Now, the evil treasure would be the false teachings that he scatters to oppose the righteousness of Christ. And then what are the evil things that the evil treasure, the unbelief, brings forth? The fruits of unbelief, right? All manner of sin. And then you have this bit about words and uh, careless words, right? Hmm. What careless words will matter on the judgment day? What words were you talking about? These idle words that men speak. I think it follows right after evil man with evil treasure, evil things. Yeah, these are false teachings about Christ that lead to unbelief. Now, how can words, how can words justify or condemn? This is what it says here. Your words, by your words, you will be justified. And by your words, you will be condemned. So, dekaya o, dekaya it o, excuse me, the kaosune is justification. So this is the justify word. Condemnation, by the way, is kata de kadzo, excuse me, kata de kadzo. So it's the same root, but against just justified. <laughs> All right. Yeah. How do your words? Well, go back and look at verse thirty-four. How can you, being evil, speak good things? And all right, see, your words bear evidence to what your heart has. So those who confess Christ are the ones whose hearts depend on Christ and are justified for his sake, and their words bear witness to what he has done and what they believe. All right. Um, Then Pharisees now and scribes are talking to him, right? And what do they want from him? A sign. Yeah, a miraculous sign. Now, how does Jesus describe them? Yeah, he describes them as an adu- mur- wicked, excuse me, and adulterous, an evil, porneros and adulterous generation who seek after a sign. And of course, Jesus though gives them a sign. It's not the sign they want. It's not a miraculous sign, but it is a sign, a sign of the prophet Jonah. And what's the sign of Jonah? Yeah, Jonah was in was 3 days and 3 nights in the belly of a great fish. And so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. It's talk, referring to his death, right? And that he would rise from the dead on the third day. In the judgment, who would con- condemn the Jews of Jesus' generation? This is fascinating, verse 41. Yeah, the men of Nineveh will be the ones who declare judgment against these Pharisees and scribes. Why? The men of Nineveh were the ones that repented at the preaching of Jonah. And now these these men, these Pharisees and scribes, are rejecting the one who is greater than Jonah. So these men of Nineveh will in effect say, how can you not believe the one whom Jonah testified of? We believed in Jonah. We believed Jonah's word. And yet now the greater than Jonah came and you refused to believe him? Yeah. So that's one of Jesus' titles. The greater than Jonah. Greater than Jonah is his name. Now who, he gives another expression here, the queen of the south. Who is this queen of the south? It's the queen of Sheba, right? Here, I went to it. First Kings 10. Now, when the king, queen of Sheba heard of the fame of Solomon concerning the name of the Lord, she came to test him with hard questions. She came to Jerusalem with a very great retinue, with camels that bore spices, very much gold and precious stones. And when she came to Solomon, she spoke with him about all that was in her heart. So Solomon answered all her questions. There was nothing so difficult for the king that he could not explain it to her. And when the queen of Sheba had seen all the wisdom of Solomon, the house that he had built, the food on his table, the seating of his servants, the service of his waiters in their apparel, his cupbearers, and his entryway by which he went up to the house of the Lord. There was no more spirit in her. Then she said to the king, It was a true report which I heard in my own land about your words and your wisdom. However, I did not believe the words until I came and saw with my own eyes, and indeed the half was not told me. Your wisdom and prosperity exceed the fame of which I heard. Happy are your men, and happy are your servants, who stand continually before you and hear your wisdom. Blessed be the Lord your God, who delighted in you, 
setting you on the throne of Israel, because the Lord, and there's that divine name, by the way, has loved Israel forever, for he made you king to do justice and righteousness. Then she gave the king 120 talents of gold, spices in great quantity, and precious stones. There never again came such abundance of spices as the queen of Sheba gave to King Solomon. All right, so now Jesus says, um, where did she come from? From the ends of the earth, he says, right? This queen of the south, she came from the ends of the earth. Why does she come, as we heard? To hear the wisdom of Solomon. But who is the greater than Solomon? Who is the new Solomon? Jesus. Why? Well, as we heard earlier this week and last week, think St. Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, Christ, the wisdom of God and the power of God, right? So in effect, um, Jesus is saying um, that standing before them is one greater than Solomon, who, who this hmm, pagan queen recognized to have both God's wisdom and um, all of God's authority and respected him for it. And now, yet now here he stands, the tru- truly the son of God, son of man, and they refuse to acknowledge him. Um, now this bit about the unclean spirit. When an evil spirit goes out of a man, what does it do? It goes through dry places, seeking rest. Why dry places? Yeah, that's a baptism reference, right? Where there is no water of baptism. What does the spirit do when it finds no new home or rest? It returns to the house he left. And what does the spirit find when it returns? Empty, swept clean, placed in order. Hmm. So then the spirit, when he finds the house empty, what does he do? He goes and gets seven more spirits, more wicked than the first. So, um, in verse 44, whom is Jesus describing as the house? He's talking about this, verse 39, evil and adulterous generation, right? They come, they find the house swept and put in order. That is, they're law-abiding citizens, if you like, right? But they refuse to hear and believe. It's a waterless place. Now, who comes to see um, Jesus? His brothers, mother and his brothers, right? Um, But whom does Jesus call his mothers and brothers? Those who... Listen to him, to his preaching. What is the will of my father? Which he talks about here in verse 50. Well, for this, we go back to the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, we might as well do it. The will of my father. Not everyone who says, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven. But he who does the will of my father in heaven. Many will say to me, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Right? And then there was the building the house upon the rock. Right? So what is it to do the will of my Father? Go back to our text here. To do the will of the Father is to hear and to do his words. Why does he say the disciples are also his mother? Yeah, that's right. Um, The church is called our mother, right? And so these disciples collectively are the church, the congregation of God, uh, who is the mother of all who believe. In a meditation on this text, the ultimate good tree is the cross from which all life comes. The tree was made good because the body of our Lord hung upon it. From that cross, all true life comes forth and produces faith in the hearts of men. The heart of faith is filled with the good of Christ, and thus speaks the word of faith. This word of faith is the confession, which is summarized by the creed, that the baptized have been given to confess in their daily life before men. Faith trusts the sign of Jonah that Christ fulfilled in his death and resurrection. Like the people of Nineveh, many have been called to faith through the preaching of repentance and the forgiveness of sins, given to us in holy baptism. As the Queen of Sheba came 
or the queen of the south came to hear the words of Solomon, so many from the nations of the earth have come and been baptized into Christ, the wisdom and power of God. Those who have been baptized into Christ have had the unclean or evil spirit cast out of them. So our Lord calls us to return to our baptism daily and hear the preaching of the new Solomon so that the unclean spirit may not return to us. In the preached word attached to baptism, the Holy Spirit preserves us for the day of the resurrection to eternal life. The sheep gather around their mother, the church, and their fellow brothers and sisters in Christ to hear the word of Christ, that is, the proclamation of the good tree who is our tree of life, Jesus. All right, there's our meditation for today, this Friday, uh, June 10th, 2020. So glad to have you with us here again today. You can join us each morning for our congregation at prayer. Um, indeed, um, the prayer aspect has been lacking this week, given that these are pre-recorded and a little bit briefer as such. So feel free to um, use the prayer guide as it was found in our bulletin on Sunday. Um, it's on our website under Church Then News, um, and it's available via the, the weekly email that goes out. So you can sign up for our email list. Just go to our website, go down to the bottom, and either you'll get the pop-up or you can use the form at the bottom. All right. So Lord be with you all, and we'll see you again in the morning.